What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to be back to work on the 2019 Dodge Challenger. As you guys seen in the previous episode, we got this thing all buttoned up and painted in the front. And I got to say, it turned out absolutely amazing. I mean, it doesn't get any better than this. This is pretty much factory spec right there. It even looks better than the passenger side. Unfortunately, this car will not drive. It will not rev and there's a bunch of lights on the dash. And I'm thinking maybe it is because it has a bad battery. So we did actually go to Walmart, picked up a new battery and let's go ahead and install it and see if this thing will actually drive. If not, we'll have to get our OBD scanner and scan some codes. So we got our nice Fantic jumper box and let's go ahead and see if we can replace this battery real quick and see if it will drive. I don't know what's going on with this car. Hopefully that throttle body is actually a good one because that's a brand new one. It's not like an OEM one, which I should have probably got an OEM used one instead of a brand new one. Because who knows how them Chinese boys manufactured it. Let's go inside here and let's pop the trunk. There we go. We do got a brand new ever start. This thing's going to start every time. And let's get this old battery out right here and get the new one installed and see what happens with this car. Battery out of here. So we got the new battery installed and now let's see if we can actually drive this car. Because earlier with the jumper box, it did not want to drive. All right, we got full power. Now we got to put the key to it. There we go. You can see, that's all it revs right there. I'm hitting full throttle. And nothing is happening. That is so weird. I mean, we got an ABS light, we got the traction light. So let's go ahead and grab our OBD scanner and see if we can fix this car real quick. So we got the scanner hooked up and let's see if we can fix this car. This is uh, American made. See, when I hit the gas pedal, it kind of like idles down. So unfortunately, Dodge doesn't actually let you scan their cars. You have to have a special FCA login. But I was just sitting here, I let the car run for a little bit and check this out now. Now it, now it runs good. Dang, this thing sounds good. So we didn't even need to scan it. I mean, we'll definitely need to scan it for the ABS and the traction, but I mean, now we can actually drive it, which is awesome. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. Yo, this thing is sick. And man, I gotta say, I'm super happy that the car actually revs now. I thought it might've been a serious issue, maybe like a wire broken or something, but I think the car just needed to be reset a couple of times, like on it and off, kind of like an iPhone whenever you drop it, you gotta turn it off and on again. But anyways, all that is good. And we can't drive this car up the road just yet because we will have to bleed the ABS system. Because as you guys know, all four or all of the brake lines go through here and we kind of opened it up. So there is a lot of air in the system. And I'm hoping that's why the ABS light is on. Maybe there's just not enough fluid in there and it's just throwing some codes. I guess we'll have to see. So now it's time to focus on the next step is getting this car ready for paint. But before we do any of that, today's video is sponsored by Phone Rebel, an iPhone exclusive case company that strives to build the best best case as possible and i think they might have just done that with the rebel gen 5 case so let's take a closer look at the rebel gen 5 case i gotta say this thing is packed with so much cool features my personal favorite is the armored fiber kevlar body which is gonna make this case super strong so if i ever do drop this brand new phone i won't damage it and you gotta say these phone prices are pretty outrageous these days and not only that it has aluminum machine buttons which is pretty cool you can actually swap them out for different color titanium ones and i gotta say i've never seen that on an iphone case so that's pretty revolutionary now let's go ahead and get this case installed on our brand new phone it also comes with a free screen protector And 
And check it out, I've actually been testing out the new iPhone 15, and I gotta say, I absolutely love the quality on this thing. But this case right here is just absolutely amazing. I love the CNC buttons, they just have such a nice touch to them. And also these nice little ridges on the side is just perfect. So when I'm filming vlogs or I'm filming stuff, it doesn't slip out of my hand and break. And then they also have this other version right here, which has like the cutout sides. But honestly, I need this one right here because I do work around a lot of concrete and I definitely don't want to drop my phone. So what are you guys waiting for? Definitely head over to phonerebel.com. I'll also drop all the links down below and use my promo code VTUNE to get 15% off. Not only are you supporting my channel, you're also getting one of the best iPhone cases on the market. Now let's get back to work on this Challenger. So we're gonna go ahead and get to work on this Challenger. The first thing I wanna do is make sure all the mechanicals is good with this car. So I think what we're gonna do is actually go ahead and bleed the brake system because as you guys know, we replaced this ABS unit. We do have a couple of ABS lights on the dash and unfortunately we can't scan them i don't know why it's kind of funny though you can steal these cars really easy but you can't scan it to see what codes are on there so we'll probably have to take this thing to the dealer but maybe if we do bleed the brakes maybe the abs light will go off and i think it would just be good because right now it's really sketchy driving this car even just right here in the parking lot there's a little bit of brakes but they're super weak and then we also have our cooling we have a radiator an ac condenser and the fans because ours are a little bit cracked up in there and we also have a new line right here because if you remember we actually cut it made it a little bit short and it's kind of pulling everything in so let's go ahead and jack this car up on jack stands and get all these tires off and get these brakes bled off the car and i did do an inspection on all of the abs lines because as you guys remember this bumper right here was kind of popped off right here and i was thinking maybe there's an abs line ripped over here but everything seems to be good so maybe it's just the a low pressure in the lines that's what's causing the abs to be on but check this out this is what we're going to be using to bleed these brakes this right here is a little pump and then you have a little capsule right there and it catches all the brake fluid i gotta say if you're ever bleeding brakes this right here is a game changer i know back in the day i used to have a person inside pumping it and then you go out here and release it but with this tool right here you basically just one man team so let's go ahead and bleed all four brakes and see if that fixes our issue So we got all the brakes bled and I gotta say there was a ton of air in there. I mean, it makes sense. Those ABS lines were off for a couple of days and I guess they are doing some road work over there. Kind of annoying, but we need new roads over here cause we're gonna go burn some rubber right on that fresh road that they're gonna pave out there. But anyways, I did actually find out some new things about the ABS pump. We're probably gonna have to take it to the dealership and get it programmed to the car because it, right now it's coded to the other car's VIN number and it turns out it won't work. I did get my scanner to scan it. Can't really clear any codes, but you can scan it. You can also replace the module right here with just unscrewing these two bolts. There's one right here and then, then two below, which is pretty crazy. Somebody actually commented that, so big shout out to you. I've never actually seen anybody replace it like that, and then I did some more digging on YouTube. Anyways, now that the brake situation is all good to go, let's go ahead and pop this bumper off. We'll go ahead and replace all of these coolers, and then we can potentially take this thing up the road and see how it drives.
So as the antifreeze is draining, I'm gonna go ahead and open up these boxes and make sure we have the right parts. Hopefully it is. Hopefully I didn't make a mistake while ordering them. And let's go ahead and open them up and see what we got in here. So we unpackaged everything and everything seems to be the right parts except for this condenser is silver instead of black like the original one. So I think I'm just gonna go ahead and scuff it down, give it a nice paint job because honestly black is gonna look a lot better. You're not gonna be able to see anything in the grills. So let's scuff this bad boy down. I got some nice high heat paint and let's get it painted in. So check it out, we got the AC condenser all nice and sprayed in and it looks really good. It's a little weird in the lighting, but it's gonna match the OEM look. Now we can go ahead and take off our radiator because it finished draining everything down here. Take off our radiator, take off our fans and start installing our new setup. seems fine there's no leaks we let it run for a couple of minutes let it warm up and i did actually test out the headlights so everything works good on the driver side headlight you can see it even has the little ta in there which that looks pretty cool although the passenger side headlight is not working and i have a little i have a little theory why that probably isn't working maybe i need to clean up the grounds you see there's two grounds right there maybe i got a little bit too much paint on the ground stick and probably just need to clean that off and maybe this headlight will start working hopefully it does that would be nice I hate troubleshooting headlights. You guys remember my BMW. That thing was such a nightmare, but it turned out to be such an easy fix. But anyways, it's getting really late out here, so I guess I'll catch you guys tomorrow. So it's the next day here at the shop, and now it's time to go ahead and button this thing up now that we got all the coolers nice and replaced. And honestly, like the radiator was still good. The condenser was still good, but the only thing that was broken was the fans, but the radiator was a little bit bent. I probably could have just straightened it out, but honestly, it wasn't too expensive. Got all that replaced, and now it's time to go ahead and put all these rims back on the car. And I want to do a little test drive and see how it drives. I'm like really excited to drive this thing. I've never drove a Scat Pack Challenger. And then on the bumper, I was actually doing some heat treatment with it. I heated it up with this little heater right here, and I had it on the stand, and I kind of pushed this area out. And hopefully it straightens everything out. I mean, plastic does have like a memory. So once you heat it up, it should go back into the perfect mold, just like it came out of the factory. I'm hoping that. But let's go ahead and get these wheels back on this car and get it on the floor.
and check it out. We got the Challenger on the floor and I gotta say it turned out absolutely amazing. Check this out. We actually fixed this bumper up and it turns out I was actually missing this little reinforcement bar in there and I'm guessing the heat treatment worked really good. Also because all the gaps on the side, this thing just lines up perfectly. I also put on the brackets that go here. We are still missing two brackets that go on the side. There's one here one over there and I don't think we'll be able to do this body work just yet because I want to get those brackets on there and make sure everything lines up perfectly but man look at that right there that is a perfect bumper gap I mean you should always see these challengers even OEM ones you'll see the gap is a little bit bigger I remember my charger I had the same problem but all you gotta do is just work it out uh, adjust it make it fit up heat it up do all that stuff I mean I wish I would have bought an OEM bumper which it probably would have been near the same price, but I kind of messed up because I kind of wanted to get this car done super fast. So I ordered this bumper like a day after I bought the car. I didn't even have the car here and I already ordered the bumper, but I mean, we're going to make it work. It looks super good. Now we're about to test drive this car. Hopefully everything drives good. We also just gave the car a nice wash because why not? We are going to start on the body work here soon and it doesn't hurt to wash the car, especially since it is going to go to paint. And whenever you're painting a car, you always want to make sure the car is 100% clean so you get a cleaner and better paint job. So we'll probably wash it one more time after all the body work. So three washes in total just to make a nice, perfect paint job on it. But anyways, let's go ahead and slap. But anyways, let's hop in this car and do a little test drive. All right, let's do a little test drive in this car. Brakes feel good. Shaker pack. I love the pistol grip. I did actually take off these two pieces, but that's all right. So we got the car outside. Now it's time to do a little test drive. I really just want to see how this car drives, make sure everything is perfect with it before we send it off to paint. I also went ahead and put in the driver's seat belt. I also went ahead and put in the driver's seat. We do have a couple of lights on the dash. Hey, it sounds so good. And check it out. The previous owner left us a full tank of gas. Let's take this thing up the road, see how it does. So I went ahead and just threw on the center console because this thing would not turn on and the, I guess the AC was on, but let's go ahead and take this thing for a test drive. Windshield is a little bit broken, but that's all right. Oh no, what is it? All right, let's go. It's making some kind of noise down there. a sway bar. Whoa! Okay, so this car does not have any ABS. We gotta be extremely careful. Dang, what the heck? There's something weird going on down there. I can hear something clacking and clanking. It might actually be the sway bar. You guys hear that? Making a lot of noise. That is weird. Something, something is like hitting metal under there or something. I don't know what's going on. Okay, found our issue. The sway bar bushing is gone. That's what's making all that noise. That ain't bad. I mean, that's not the worst thing that could possibly be wrong with it, but man, I gotta say, this thing just turned out so freaking good. Look at that. Just the absolute beauty. All she needs is a nice little paint job and she's gonna be good to go. So other than the missing sway bar bushing, the car drives pretty good. It does make a lot of noise because that's just metal on metal rattling up and down, but hey, it has some nice power. Dude, this shifter right here is probably the best shifter I've ever felt in a car. It's super short, it's super tight. It's just absolutely amazing. And the only lights on right now are ABS and traction. So this thing has no traction control. You can literally, I literally floored it just a little bit and almost freaking drifted into a wall. So almost wrecked a clean title car. That was not too good. Gotta be super careful with it. Definitely have to take it to the dealership for them to uh, reprogram the ABS unit. But all the temps look good. Look at that right there. No problems right there. I mean, they did give us a full tank of gas, but that gas is probably so freaking old. We're definitely gonna have to use that. I'll probably do a nice massive burnout. 
maybe 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 not but yeah drives good it is going to need an alignment as you can see steering wheel is a little bit crooked probably something happened under there because it might have flew off the road actually but you can hear how loud that sway bar is i thought it was something super serious but just from previous experiences you can hear it like right here by your foot and you can just tell it's just a little sway bar, but let's head back to the shop. So guys, that's gonna be a wrap for today's video. And I gotta say, I can't be more happy with the way this car is turning out. First test drive was pretty good. Unfortunately, we have a missing sway bar bushing, but honestly, that's super easy fix. Just unbolt two bolts, slap a new sway bar bushing on there. Maybe we'll even get some upgraded ones. I'm guessing if this thing maybe flew off the road or something and it hit that sway bar bushing and it just popped right out. Not a big deal at all. And the only thing we are waiting for is a couple of brackets. I definitely want to get this bracket in. Hopefully, it'll be here tomorrow and we can do all the body work on this car. It's going to be a pretty easy paint job. Basically, four panels. One, two, three, four. And then one blend panel onto the door there's a little ding right here as you can see well that looks like some kind of door ding or something like that i don't know what that is but it's gonna be a pretty easy fix and then these right here are just scratches and then we also have a little bit of a dent right here and then a little bit of a crease so we're gonna have to fix all that line everything up perfectly but man look at this beast dude i love the manual transmission on a challenger you don't really see much manuals out there most people don't really like them and they a lot of people don't even know how to drive them which kind of sucks but anyways if you all enjoyed this video enjoying the challenger series definitely hit that subscribe button also follow us on instagram at vtune thanks for watching